Can you believe it's been five years already? Hey, I made this mistake. Don't do it! Hello, welcome or welcome back. My name is Amanda and this is Birch and Lily, my YouTube channel where I talk all about everything that I've been knitting and working on over the past couple weeks. Today is an extra special episode. It is my five year podcast anniversary on this day that I'm recording actually. Um, I looked back and my first episode went up on November 20th, 2018, which is crazy. Um, so I definitely will be doing something special to celebrate later on the episode. Um, but yeah, I just, I wanted to bring that up at the beginning and just say thank you so much for every one of you who has joined on and watched my videos since I started uploading. I can't believe I've been doing this for five years. It's insane. <laughs> and I'm so glad I stuck with it. It's been such a fun and rewarding thing to do. So I really appreciate all of you. But yeah, this is my podcast where I talk about knitting stuff. So let's jump in. There are a few places you can find me on the internet. The main one is my website, birchandlilyfiber.com. You can also find me on Instagram at birch.and.lily. And everything I talk about today, links to everything I talk about, all the places you can find me are always linked down in the description below this video. I have a couple announcements before we get started. There's some fun ones though. They're not boring, I promise. <laughs> so obviously five years of podcasting is one of them very excited. Um, I also have an update coming up next week on December 1st. I'm doing a Christmas themed update. Sarah of Denim and Rain and I have teamed up together and kind of created something based off of the same theme. So we are both releasing some stuff on December 1st. So I have a few of those things to show you today. I've been working with them or I'm about to and then I'll be releasing everything, showing it off in the next coming like week, week and a half on Instagram. And I'll make sure I do some sort of short or something to post on here as well if you're interested in seeing everything in my update um, and you don't have Instagram. So there's that. I'm also participating in two cals. Uh, the first one being the Cozy Classic Cal. I'm hosting this cal with Camry of Golden Hour Knitwear and it's basically just a really chill knit along. It started already and it will be running until January 7th and it's all about knitting the Cozy Classic Reglan or the Cozy Classic Reglan Light by Jessie Made Designs. So you don't have to finish, you just have to knit along with us and join in on the fun and if you make posts on Instagram um, I'll have all the information on how to enter down below in the description, but if you make a post on Instagram and tag us, we will have prizes, so we'll be drawing for some prizes in the new year. If you're interested in donating a prize, please let me know. Um, we would love to have you join us. The other cowl that I am going to be knitting something from is the Violetta cowl. This is being run by Unit Toronto, and it is to knit the Violetta Pullover by Claudia Q. I will pop a picture of it on the screen. It's very cute. I'm gonna be casting one on for my sister and I have the yarn down on the floor down there. So I'll be showing it um, a little bit later in the episode. Same sort of thing as the Cozy Classic Knit Along. We're knitting the Violetta Pullover together. There are a few more rules to this one, which I'll make sure I have linked down below but you do need to create a project page on Ravelry and make a post or two in their thread on Ravelry as well so that you can be entered. But there are prizes for this one as well. So definitely if you're looking for something fun to do over the holidays, both of these knit-alongs run into January and I'd love if you would join along with me. It'd be really fun. So why don't we jump into finished objects and then maybe we'll do the giveaway after that. Um, I am wearing my Cardi Jumper Marinara. This is the new like revamped pattern that's coming out from Fairknit on November 22nd. I knit mine out of Woolberry Fiber Co. The green is their Berry Tweed Base Morning Hike and then the undyed I just found kicking around in my stash. Let me stand up and I'll give you a little bit of peek at the cardigan. So let's start off with this before everything. Mine is a little small. I swatched and I hit gauge on my swatch and at some point in between swatching and knitting this I must have lost gauge 
And this is a lesson for myself, because I think this is like the second time it's happened now, to double check my gauge in the middle of the project and ensure that I still have gauge. Um, so this is a little small. I should have a little bit more positive ease in here. Like I can still button it up, obviously. Um, but it does fit a little bit tighter than I would have liked. I still think it's really cute though. And I do think it's going to look really nice over some dresses and stuff once spring hits. So I'm not 100% upset just a little bit tighter than the pattern calls for. So keep that in mind if it's something that you want to knit. It's probably not going to fit you exactly like this. So I knit the size 6. Um, it is very cropped. Very cropped. That is something else I regret. I do wish maybe that I added like a little bit more to it, but I was starting to feel crunched for time and I just wanted to get it finished so I could get the notes in. So I did knit to the length the pattern called for, but I think if I maybe would have added like an inch more, I would have been a little bit happier with the fit as well, which I could do. I could rip out the... actually no, that would be a lot more work. Never mind, I take that back because the button band is applied afterwards and it's the double knit button band. So if I wanted to add length, I'd have to take the whole button band off and then add the extra length. So I take that back. No, it's going to stay the way it is and it's going to be a cardigan for dresses. Um, I'm really happy with how the button band turned out. This is my first applied button band. So I picked up stitches and knit the whole double knit button band as I went. Um, the only other time I've done something similar to that is on my Leith cardigan. But with that, I knit the whole button band separate and then seamed it on. So actually, no, I lie. Nope, I don't lie. Because, <laughs> because on my Mayberry cardigan, it also has a double knit button band, but that was knit at the same time. Is everything else. So yeah, I think it turned out really cute. I'm really happy with the buttons I picked as well. There are seven buttons on here. And I just got them from Hobby Lobby. They were super cheap, but I think the color is perfect. It doesn't detract too much from the cardigan, but still is something a little bit fun. Um, I like that they're smaller buttons. I don't know. I think they're cute. I'm happy other than the size issues and like it is what it is. It'll look really cute with a cardigan. You can see the really pretty seam detail here. And then it goes into this nice scoop almost in, let me get myself centered more. This like scoop in the shoulder, I think is really pretty. The stripes are fun. I wish I would have uh, wolf them in as I went because <laughs> it did take me a long time to weave in all the ends on this, but yeah, I I think it turned out great. Let me sit down. I'm tired of standing. So the whole cardigan is finished off with tubular bind off. So the cuff there has the tubular bind off. The whole ribbing on the bottom does, and it also shows you how to make it so that your uh, button band as well has the tubular bind off that blends into the rest of the cardigan. So I really feel like there was a lot of attention to detail put into this. I think it probably helps as well that this pattern was already released for a good year or two, I think. Um, and this is like a remake of it to make it more size inclusive. So I think that left even more time to put some thought into extra details that maybe on the original cardigan the designer realized was missing. So now they were added in on the second iteration. Yeah, I think it was so well thought out. Oh, something else that's very cool. And it's gonna be hard to show. Actually, let me take the cardigan off and I'll hold it up to show this because there's no way I'm gonna be able to show it on my body. So down both sides of the cardigan, there is the option to do a faux seam. So basically, you can kind of see it here and I'll show you on the inside in a sec, um, but you do a row of two purl stitches and then once you're done the cardigan and it's blocked, you seam it up with a mattress stitch to give you this seam detail and it gives the cardigan some structure so that it's not going to stretch out so easily from the weight of the garment itself. And I really like it. I think it's really neat. I think it adds something quite cool. It wasn't hard to do. Um, it was very quick to do, but I feel like it adds a really cool detail and some really nice structure to it. So 
I thought that was cool. It was an optional detail. You didn't have to do it, but I did, and I'm glad I did. If not just for the fact that I learned something new, I don't know. I just think it's quite neat and just another really well thought out detail. So beautiful pattern. Like I said, I think that's everything. I didn't do any modifications. Um, but yeah, the pattern will be available on November 22nd. So definitely if you're interested in it or you've been watching me knit it and you want to knit it up, definitely grab yourself a copy on the 22nd. Um, and look at the hashtag too on Instagram. It's just, um, Cardi Jumper. I think mine is Cardi Jumper Marinare Edition because I did the edition with the stripes. Um, but look it up on Instagram and see some that have a, the, the recommended amount of positive ease because um, it's really, really cool. They're also able, with the uh, recommended amount of positive ease, if they button it up, it looks like a really nice jumper, but then you can also flip it around backwards and have a scoop neck in the front instead and have the V in the back with the buttons. And I think that's really cute too. So definitely the pattern is worth knitting for sure. Just don't make my mistakes. <laughs> I feel like that's what I'm here for half the time is like, hey, I made this mistake. Don't do it. So this is my uh, don't do mistake for this episode. <laughs> Anyways, beautiful. Love it. Really happy with how it turned out. And I do think it's going to be really, really cute with dresses. So like I said, five years of podcasting deserves a giveaway, right? So my thought was to do a giveaway for a sweater quantity of yarn to knit the Cozy Classic Raglan with me and Camry. So I'm going to leave it up to the winner. Um, it'll, it'll be anything in my shop, I think minus the holiday collection, just because that's new and yeah. <laughs> so all you're gonna have to do to enter be subscribed, like the video, and leave a comment down below, maybe about your favorite moment from the podcast over the years, um, something like that. I don't know. Just leave a comment. Tell me something fun. I will ask, though, that you do be in the USA and Canada, um, because I do want you to be able to get this yarn in time to join in on the knit along with us, and shipping is very iffy other than to the US and Canada for me. Whoever wins, I'll get in contact with them. We can figure out what you want for your sweater quantity and go from there. But yeah, make sure you enter if you want to join along. It'll be really, really fun. I'll leave all the rules down below too uh, in the description in case you missed anything. But real quick again, subscribe, like the video, leave a comment, and please be in the USA and Canada. Thank you so much for five years of podcasting. Thank you for watching me <laughs> so that I can continue to do this. It's so much fun and I really enjoy it and I'm so thankful for all of the friends that I've made through these past five years. So giveaway aside, let's jump into works in progress. Little sad, sad moment for the fact that I did not finish <laughs> the two test knits that I was rushing to do last episode. Um, I got sick again. <laughs> I literally spent the last month being sick on and off and in bed. So they did not get finished, um, but I did contact the designers and they were both very gracious and okay with it. And um, of course I'm gonna finish them and get photos up when I'm able to. But for now, as their patterns are releasing, I'm just posting what I have done and obviously still sharing the pattern because I think they're great. It's not that I don't enjoy them. It's just that when you're sick and in bed, knitting is not very fun. <laughs> Let's start with my Ruska cardigan. So I am close on this one. Um, when I look at how much I've knit in the past two weeks, I can't be mad at myself because I do feel like I got a lot done. Um, even though I wasn't feeling well, it just was not enough to finish on time. So here is my Ruska cardigan. I got the whole body done. I just did not finish the sleeves. So yeah, this pattern releases today, actually, the day I'm recording, November 20th. So when this episode goes live, the Ruska cardigan is live already. Um, and make sure you check Sarah's Instagram because I believe she always does a discount code for the patterns for like a couple days after release. So, and I think this pattern is highly, highly worth it. I have tried on the finished body and I love the fit already and that's without blocking and sleeves. So that says something <laughs> about the whole piece. So here is the body. I think I'm gonna have to stand up 
um, to show the whole thing. But first of all, that's where I was last episode. I hadn't even split the sleeves. Or I just had. No, I hadn't even split the sleeves. So I'm pretty impressed with myself for that. Maybe let's do um, some close-up details and then I'll hold the whole thing up. Uh, but first of all, I'm knitting the size 5 for this one and I have modified absolutely nothing. The construction of this is so unique. I have never knit anything this way and I don't want to say too much because I don't want to give it away, um, especially because it is so unique, but the button band is knit at the same time as the body. I love that the body is all garter stitch, so you really don't have that much purling to do on it. The only purling is every second row on these stockinette panels here and then obviously when you get into the ribbing at the bottom. There's pockets. I've never knit anything with pockets and the construction on these pockets is so cool. Once again, I just, the scoop is really neat. I love the scoop. How it scoops from the ribbing into the pocket. The pocket has I-cord edging on it and the inside of it is continued to be garter, but then you've got the outside in stockinette. I just think it's really, really well thought out. And Sarah, as always, she's incredible with her patterns, but she's done such a good job with this one. Also, there's so much going on in the hem of this. So you have the pocket being the stockinette. You've got a little bit of double knitting after that. Uh, stockinette pocket so it's really nice and squishy here and then just a nice thick chunky ribbing along the bottom back so really well thought out let me stand up so you can see the whole body so I put this on a hanger because it's really hard to hold and like point things out at the same time but you can see that it's kind of bunching here right now but I haven't blocked the body so once I block it this will drop a lot because this garter is very um, stretchy. So this will pull down and the pockets will lay nice and flat and there won't be this buckling in the ribbing here on the button band. There are no buttons on this though. It is just an open front cardigan. And then the back is just beautiful squishy garter as well with this nice thick ribbing. You've got the stockinette panels running down the sides and those stockinette panels actually do connect into, so you have these um, stockinette raglans here, and then there's one in the back. And so those connect together under the arm to make this stockinette panel. So really well thought out. There has to have been so much work <laughs> that was put into figuring this whole thing out. Um, I've loved looking at all of the other testers' photos on Instagram, on the hashtag, because it's just beautiful and I am so jealous those are done and I can't wait until mine is finished. So like I said, I just have the sleeves. They are just straight up stockinette. So it really shouldn't take me long. Like it's just stockinette knitting in the round on a small circumference and the occasional decrease. So shouldn't be bad at all. And they do have a one by one ribbing cuff. So I'm gonna be using this to record my tutorial on how I knit my one by one ribbing neater. And that's gonna be going up some point over the Christmas holidays. I'm kind of pre-recording a whole bunch of stuff so that I can take a break over Christmas but still have content to go live. So that'll be recorded using this. I haven't talked about the yarn, uh, this yarn is one of the things that I was saying I was going to show you from my upcoming Christmas collection. So I guess I'll tell you the theme. This is kind of embarrassing, but I'm blanking on exactly what we decided on for the name, but I believe it's like Christmas postcard or something. Anyways, it's all about like vintage Christmas postcards that we're finding inspiration from and I've got some really cool colorways that I'm really excited about for it. But this one is called Flocked Pine. My inspiration came from all of those beautiful flocked garlands and stuff that are on people's mantelpieces, on railings, all that that you kind of see over the Christmas holidays. So it is a whole bunch of different greens and then instead of just going for a really stark white I did put the lightest wash of gray over top of everything which I think gives a better representation of the snow than just straight up undyed yarn because undyed yarn is a very creamy color so this gives more of a snow look if I hold it back here that's like the most accurate color 
I think you're gonna get, but flocked pine. So that will be in the Christmas update on December 1st. Uh, yeah, I think that's all I have to say about this. Hopefully, did I, oh, did I say it was in a DK weight yarn? It is DK weight. <laughs> yeah, that is all I have to say. Hopefully I will have this finished by next episode. That would be really exciting because I want to wear it really, really badly because it's like a, a mid-thigh length cardigan that I think is going to be really warm and cozy for the upcoming winter. Grab yourself a copy. Like I said, it is out and it is beautiful and it was really fun to knit and to learn a whole bunch of new things with. The other thing that I've been working on a ton and also did not finish is my Daft Days cardigan. Again, I did talk to Rebecca about this. Um, the pattern is coming from Rebecca Klo. I talked to her and apologized and she understood, thank goodness. But I have got quite a bit done on this. I have split the body now and I'm working on the front. So it's kind of at a point that's really hard to hold. Actually, that's not that bad. Um, so here is this. It is a cardigan that is designed to use with an advent calendar. So obviously I am not striping it like I would with an advent calendar. I only have the five colors in mine, but the idea is that every day you would add a stripe from your next mini skein in your advent calendar and slowly knit a cardigan all the way through Christmas. So it's really fun. I love it. The texture is super easy to memorize, but also super addictive. This obviously further back is always <laughs> the most accurate color representation, but I'm knitting the size four and I am using a bunch of different yarns from my shop. I had a whole bunch of different like half used DK weight skeins in all of these colors. So I just dyed up the dark charcoal, which is called graphite to use with them. So like I said, the dark charcoal is graphite. The lighter pink is Jillian. Then we have Serendipity, Christine and Kindred Spirits. So I really like how they're striping up. I'm really, again, excited to have this one done. I've been loving wearing hand knit cardigans lately. They're so easy to throw on over top of something. And this one is, like just a nice big oversized uh, drop shoulder type cardigan. So I'm also really excited for that because those I think are some of the more cozy and wintry cardigans, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I love the fit of them and I feel like they're so easy to throw on and just snuggle up in and feel so warm and wonderful. So yeah, that is where I am with this. Another DK weight cardigan, which I should state that, yes, it's DK weight, but she does write it with the thought in mind that most advent calendars are fingering weight yarn. So it's written up for holding fingering weight double, making sure that you have enough for every stripe. Us as testers did have to weigh how much yarn we used for each stripe and then go from there. I did make one modification. Um, so the pattern calls for each of the stripes to be the exact same thickness, uh, but I decided that I wanted for my main color, the stripes to be twice as thick. So in the cardigan itself, these charcoal stripes, like in the pattern, it's designed for them to be the same thickness as my colored stripes, but I just kind of liked the look of a little bit thicker of the main color stripes. So something you could do. It would, I don't know if it would change how much you can use or like if you could use all of your advent minis. Obviously once I finish it and seam the shoulders together I can get back to you on that and let you know how many of these stripes I end up having. I don't know. I liked, I liked that a little bit better just for myself. The thicker stripes I think are great too. I'm sure the photo I put on the screen of it shows the, not thicker, the thinner stripes um, that Rebecca used for hers. She also knit one, so she knit one with an advent calendar and she also knit one just with two colors and I thought that was really, really pretty as well. And this one also has something that's going to be in the shop update on December 1st. If you like my corgi stitch stoppers that I keep in the shop all the time, it's a corgi with a Santa hat. <laughs> I couldn't not grab these to put in the shop. So these will be available on December 1st as well. They're just so darn cute and I 
they make me very happy. <laughs> so yeah, um, that's what I've been working on. But as we talked about at the beginning of the episode, I'm going to be joining in on two knit alongs. So I thought I would show you the yarn for those. And the two colorways are also part of my Christmas collection, which works really well. You get to see every single color except for one. Yeah, you get to see every single color except for one. And I think that's pretty great. I will um, preface this with, I will not be including boucle in the Christmas update. It just did not sell as well as I wanted it to, but I had some skeins left over and I always wanted to knit my Cozy Classic Reglan at a boucle. So I quick dyed some up for myself. If I get lots of interest for the boucle, I might look into it again, but as of now, not going to be carrying boucle for the immediate future. But this colorway, this is called Blue Christmas. It is a creamy base with some really light blues and some really light sandy sort of neutral pink. And then there is some champagne throughout there as well that kind of like mutes everything down and makes it like vintagey. I will show you the boucle. The boucle pulled the color a lot more intensely, but I feel like it might be better to show it off on the camera just so you get a better idea of what the color is going to look like when it gets to your door, because with it being more saturated, then it doesn't get blown out on the camera. No, that's really bad. <laughs> I take that back. Yeah, don't look at that. <laughs> It's a really pretty color and I will obviously have pictures posted on Instagram before the update. I have prototyped all the colors out but I haven't dyed them up yet on um, the bases I'm going to be offering. So those pictures will be coming on Instagram this week. But yes, Blue Christmas um, is going to be what I'm knitting my Cozy Classic Raglan out of. So I'm going to be using the just plain DK weight for all of the cuffs and then the boucle for the body. And I think it's going to be really fun. My boucle just grabbed the hanger I was using earlier. Um, but yeah, that's that. <laughs> that nice big mess is going to be my Cozy Classic Reglan. And then this other colorway I'm very excited about on both the fingering weight and the surrey because they pulled the color differently, but like not in a bad way. <laughs> so this is going to be called Festive. Is that not gorgeous? And then look at it on the Surrey. It pulls a little bit more like pinky burgundy on the Surrey, but they're both, oh my gosh. Yeah. So I'm gonna be holding both of these double to knit up my Violetta pullover. It is a gift from my sister. She requested a nice deep red and I knew that it needed to be a part of the Christmas collection. So that is that. I think it is gorgeous. I, yeah, I really like how the Surrey pulled the color. Surrey being a non-superwash base always takes the color quite a bit differently. Let me twist it up because then you get a better idea of what it's going to knit up with or knit up like rather. It always pulls the color differently. So you got like some of that really, really red in there, but also those really pretty burgundy tones pulling through it. Again, can you imagine the two of these held together? It's gonna be like the softest, burgundyish, reddish, most beautiful cardigan. <laughs> Why do I keep saying cardigan? I guess because I'm knitting all cardigans right now, it's gonna be a pullover, <laughs> but I think it's going to be gorgeous. So those are including, can I also hold the Ruska somehow? These are three of the colorways that are a part of the, uh, Vintage postcard, Christmas postcard. I am a terrible dyer <laughs> and a terrible, what's the word I'm looking for? A terrible advertiser. <laughs> um, but these are gonna be a part of the collection. Actually, these two together are really pretty too. Flocked pine and festive. Anyways, that is that. I will have better photos and all of that jazz on Instagram. <laughs> probably midweek and into next week. So keep an eye out for that. Oh, I'm also going to be adding a, another color of the stitch holder cords to the shop as well. 
I have another color that's gonna go in the shop and I'm really excited about it and I want some for myself but I haven't let myself take any yet so that is that um yeah please join me in both of those cows, one or the other, would be great. I would love to knit along with you. Make sure you enter the giveaway. Like I said, like the video, be subscribed, leave some sort of comment down below, and make sure you're in the USA and Canada. Um, and I will pick one of you to win a sweater quantity for the Cozy Classic Raglan knit along. You'll be able to pick. I don't know if I said between the light or the DK. I don't care, but... I will dye something up for you. If you haven't watched last week's episode, I did put up a video of 10 different patterns that I think would work really great for knitting up your advent calendar this year. 10 different sweater patterns. So I have some cardigans, some pullovers, and actually one tank that I think would be really great with your advent calendar. So if you haven't seen that yet, make sure you check that video out. And then next week, I'm going to have another advent themed video going up. Um, another way that you can use your advent calendars. And then next week, I know I did say I was going to have another advent calendar video up, but I want to leave it up to you. Would you rather see a video about shawls you can knit with your advent calendar, or would you rather see a quick gift knit video? Um, so like some projects that you can knit really quickly for gift knits to give away at Christmas. Uh, let me know down in the comments. I can do either. I can probably do both. Yeah, I could do both too. But let me know which one you would prefer, just in case I'm short on time. Thank you so much for joining me. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. It helps out the channel very much. And at this point in time, we are so, so, so close to hitting 7,000 subscribers on YouTube. So that would be really exciting if we could do that soon. <laughs> um, it'd be really fun. So definitely subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that like button and I will see you next week for another video. Bye!